Hello and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Kerrigan Nelson. I am 19 years old and I am fighting a rare bone cancer called osteosarcoma. This is my friend Thomas. I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, I'm Thomas. Um, I have a rare form of bone cancer called Ewing sarcoma. Um, I've been friends with Kerrigan for a little while now. Yeah, we met each other at the hospital. So, you know, it's kind of mm -hmm. cool. We both have sarcomas, so it's a big bond over that. Today, we are going to be doing a cancer question and answer video. So hopefully I can clear up some of the questions that you all have had and left in the comments down below. And I hope you enjoy. Also, before we start the video, if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, it would mean a lot to me. My number one goal of this channel was to raise awareness of childhood cancer and osteosarcoma. And by subscribing, you can help do that. Thank you. So the first question we got was, what is cancer? And I know this is a very broad question, but I'm just going to explain it really quickly. So the internet's most used definition of cancer is a disease caused by an uncontrolled division of abnormal cells in the part of the body. So the next question is, what is osteosarcoma? So osteosarcoma is a rare form of bone cancer, usually found in kids and teens, and it is treated with chemo and then most cases, limb salvage surgery and amputation. Rarely radiation is used, but it has been used before. The survival rate is about 60 to 70%. If you relapse, the percentage goes down tremendously. And I did happen to relapse, but we don't listen to numbers here. We don't. And it is most often misdiagnosed as a sports injury, as mine was, and often presents as a lump or mass and is very tender. A uh, similar situation with me where it, there was a lump on my left leg. The next question is, is your cancer contagious? Well, luckily my cancer is not contagious. Most cancers are actually not contagious, but there are some, very few, but luckily mine is not. Yeah, mine is not contagious either. I, I've never met anyone with a contagious cancer before, but I know that they do exist. Yeah. So, I mean, this could probably be a whole separate video, but uh, could you summarize um, your cancer journey and what you've gone through so far? Yes, this was one of my most asked questions was on my cancer journey. I can totally make a video in the future um, about my whole entire cancer journey, but I'm gonna try to sum it up as fast as I can. I'm gonna be looking at a piece of paper because I am struggling with chemo fog right now, and if you don't know what that is, then I will explain it later on in the video. So, one of the first things that happened was I started getting pain in my left leg. I did Taekwondo and I did dance and I was a very active person. I walked dogs and um, you know, I was, I was going to the gym all the time and I developed a lump in my left leg below my knee. And the doctors just said it was a pulled muscle. Nothing showed up on x-rays and you know, I thought it was crazy because the pain was so extreme and it would wake me up in the middle of the night. So I was thinking I just had a really low pain tolerance. One day I was at the mall with my friends and I couldn't walk and the doctor um, prescribed a CT scan and the insurance didn't cover it. So I ended up going to the hospital and when I went to the hospital, they did an ultrasound and x-ray and that showed nothing definitive. So they decided to do a CT scan and the CT scan ended up showing a, a large lesion in my left leg. The day that I was diagnosed with osteosarcoma was March 15th of 2019. Um, Obviously, there's there's not much I can say about that day. It was an awful day that I will never forget. They decided to do a biopsy, and they thought it was already oster they already thought it was osteosarcoma, but they needed evidence and proof so they could go forward with the chemo. So the next step after being diagnosed was I had to get a port placed inside of me, and my port was right here. And if you're not sure what that is, that's a small medical device that is connected to your heart, which the chemo goes through. I had nine months of chemotherapy, and I also had a limb salvage leg surgery, and that's when I still had my leg at the time. Not only did I go through chemo, and I had a huge surgery, but I also gained 60 pounds, and that's a that's a big part of my journey because the chemo and the steroids did make me gain a lot of weight. And when I was first diagnosed, I never thought that I would be gaining a lot of weight from cancer. Cause when you think of cancer, you kind of, you think of, you know, throwing up and being skinny, but it was the exact opposite for me. There's many- you were on some medication that made it hard for you to yeah. actually throw up, right? Yeah. So I was on so much medication and- And steroids. And yeah. Whatnot. I was on tons of medication. The only thing that I could really eat was pasta and pasta's carbs. So I was downing pasta every single day, believe it or not, every single day, even for breakfast. So um, the most awful um, side effects were anxiety, PTSD, and awful nightmares. 
I'm still struggling with that now. Severe mobility impairments because the nerve was cut in my leg, leaving me partially paralyzed in my foot, which um, a lot of people didn't actually know that. So if you're one of my friends, yes, I was actually partially paralyzed from the surgery that I had. Did you know that? No. Yeah, so. Um, I, I walked with a limp. I did have this um, little brace that I would use on my foot. So you, if, if I use that, then you couldn't even notice that I had a limp. But if not, then I had a limp. I was in remission for less than eight months. And remission felt extremely short because I'm still trying to get my life on track. I was still trying to get back to, you know, who I was before cancer. I was trying to lose weight. I was trying to get back into dance. And I was trying to recover emotionally, mentally, and... It, it was definitely it was definitely a tough time. I started getting really tired again and just feeling sick and um, I was very weak and I started to get a little bit sore in my left leg again, but I wasn't too worried about it because obviously there was a tumor there at one point. I had many surgeries there and my team wasn't too worried about it, but I was going to I was scheduled for another surgery and the surgery was to fix the nerve in my leg that was actually cut and they decided to do an ultrasound of my leg for the surgery to, you know, just to make sure that the whole entire area was safe and that there was nothing else going on. And that's when the ultrasound um, showed a lesion in my left leg. And I remember reading that on my phone. My doctors didn't call me first. Um, I actually read it off my phone and I burst out into tears. I was kind of in disbelief, but I knew that having osteosarcoma, there was a 50-50 chance of it coming back. So. I always try to stay strong and be prepared for the worst. But the the best thing when osteosarcoma comes back is to amputate if you already didn't amputate before. So that's that's what I decided to do. I think it was the safest option. I just wanted to make sure that <laughs> the cancer was completely out of my body. So we had to do above the knee, which is a little bit harder because you obviously don't have a knee that's functioning anymore. So my prosthetic journey has been a little tough. Now I am, I think, four months away from amputation, and I have been doing chemotherapy, and I have been in physical therapy a couple of times a week, and I've been trying to get on my leg, and here I am with my YouTube channel trying to document everything that's going on in my life, so um, that's just like a quick little summary of what's going on. So yeah, <laughs> that was a oh, lot. Yeah. So how does having cancer, how does that have affected your daily life? So I just want to say one of my quick quotes. I have cancer, but cancer doesn't have me. And I think that's really important. And if you're fighting cancer as well, that is something cancer doesn't define who you are as a person. Yes, it is a part of you, but it's not who you are. Obviously chemo affects me daily. Some days I'm not able to get out of the bed and I'm sleeping all day long and I'm not able to eat. Other days I feel pretty close to Kerrigan and I feel 100%. One thing that I wrote down is I, what I wanted to say is, I have to live with the side effects daily, but cancer itself, it's its an everyday thing and, um, you know, it's an everyday thing that I'm going to have to deal with. I don't know if that makes sense or not. So Thomas had to leave, so it is just me and my leg now. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to have the leg sitting next to me. This was my mom's idea. Why would you not have your leg next to you? Mom, that's weird. We're just going to, we're just going to put sunshine away. Get it, walking on sunshine. Her name's Sunshine. gotta stop doing that. <laughs> One thing that I forgot to mention is that I currently have a couple of blood clots in my lungs in my left. Yeah, how do you, how do you, how do you forget to mention that, right? Only me. Pulmonary um, embolisms. Yes. In my left arm, my right arm, and then also in my lungs. So I have to get two shots a day and it is blood, blood thinner shots. And <laughs> Another hard. thing that I wanted to add was that so far during my cancer journey, I've had to go to the emergency room, I think over, three times maybe mm -hmm. and it's it's been a short period of time it's only been four months and we've had a couple of emergencies already I would say fighting sepsis yeah fighting sepsis. sepsis I mean no biggie it's like I just forgot that you know it's no biggie at all but yes I did fight sepsis and I remember later on you're gonna do a whole thing on the seriousness of sepsis yes the heck? mr. Toffee I guess now is a good time to show you my therapy dog mr. Toffee He's so cute. Look at him. You're in the spotlight, buddy. My next question is, what are your favorite snacks slash food to eat during chemo? <laughs> Toffee, Hot dogs. did you want to answer this question? I like to eat very bland things when I'm going through chemotherapy. It 
chemotherapy can change the taste buds in your mouth and it can also make you very nauseous. So you wanna eat stuff that's really light on the stomach. My favorite things were pasta, rice, toast, eggs, English muffins. Since I lose my taste sometimes and I can only taste a little bit, I tend to crave sour foods and salty foods that you can taste a little bit more. My favorites are pickles, Airhead Extremes, salt and vinegar chips, and you know, just comfort food in general, like baked mac and cheese. I've had a couple of my friends make that for me. So if you're watching this, you're a real one. Thank you. You might see a little bit of a lighting change. I had to switch phones because I lost storage on my phone. On a more serious note, another question that I received is, what is the worst part about chemo? And these are the worst parts about chemo for me. Losing your hair, suppressed blood counts, weight gain or weight loss, stretch marks and sensitive skin, bloating, swelling, altered taste and sensitivity to colors, lack of energy, energy, easily fatigued, nausea, and chemo fog. And that's a lot for you. I gotta sneeze. COVID. <laughs> I would have to say the worst part for me is losing your hair um, and lack of energy because lack of energy, you can't always accomplish what you want to do. Some days you just can't get out of bed and that's okay. If you're going through a similar thing, it's okay to take days to yourself. But as long as you have goals and you keep trying to get there, you'll be in a good place, I promise. Another thing that I struggle with that I mentioned towards the end was chemo fog. And if you're not familiar what chemo fog is, there's, there's no scientific explanation for it. But in my own words, I would have to say it's, you know, you have all this toxicity running through your body, chemicals going through your head, and it's kind of like you feel like you're just in a, in a fog, like in a different world, you're just confused, you can't remember things, and it's, it's like when you're trying to have a conversation with someone, you jumble your words, and you can't think of the certain word. So that's the best way I can describe it. I'm currently in the chemo fog, so during this, uh, during this question and answer video, you might, you might see that a couple times. Next question is, are you able to attend school or college presently? If not, do you plan on attending? Currently, I am enrolled in my state college, but I am on medical leave, obviously, due to the circumstances that I have been facing. But I plan to go back to school as soon as things, as soon as things, I guess, medically start to look better for me. I actually was about to start college when I had just relapsed. So it's very unfortunate, but I, every single day, I'm one step closer to starting college again. So. One of my most frequently asked questions is, how do you support someone who has cancer slash going through treatment? Be very positive, but realistic. Offer love and support and demonstrate compassion. Ask them how you can support them. One thing that has been very helpful for my family is people have provided meals, food, gas cards, and other gift cards. Has your cancer diagnosis affected your views on life? Most definitely. Um, I've always known that life is precious, but when you're fighting for your life, it makes you realize how precious it actually is. Um, a point that I wanted to make is you appreciate the little things more. When I'm staying in a hospital for a long time, you kind of forget what real air, you know, I guess smells like and just, just certain scents and being able to just walk outside is such, a, is such a blessing. I've been in a hospital weeks at a time and I definitely, I definitely now appreciate every little thing. What is the most shocking thing that you have learned through having cancer? I am going to look at my piece of paper for this because I don't want to forget the important facts. I was shocked and disheartened to learn that only 4% of federal funding is slated for childhood cancer research and treatments. It's honestly shameful. Now I have a question for you. How can we change that? We deserve more than 4%. I also learned that cancer is just, isn't just about getting chemo. It's so much more intense. It's weight gain, weight loss, no hair, chemo fog, unable to spend time with your friends, missing home, family, pets, and normal life. A multitude of long-term slash lifetime side effects, an endless array of medications, appointments, painful medical procedures and evaluations, diagnostic, t diagnostic testing, lab work, physical therapy, etc. Once you enter the cancer world, you honestly really never leave it. And that's, I, I'm sure a lot of you that are going through cancer have learned the same thing. What has been the most difficult thing that you have had to overcome? Good question. I feel like every day is filled with obstacles. I just recently went through above the knee amputation. Not having a leg has been the most challenging thing that I've had to overcome. Trying to love myself again has definitely been another challenge. Obviously, I, I've, I said this before, but I gained a lot of weight and it's hard to love yourself when you look completely different if you're loving a new person. And I, I definitely changed a lot from it, but it's a work in progress. In fact, I'm on a low carb keto diet and I'm hopeful that will work.
and it is working. I've lost 10 pounds. <laughs> what direction are you headed in now that active cancer treatment is slowing down? I am vlogging and I am TikToking. I'm so excited to have this YouTube channel. As I'm making this video right now, I currently have 500 subscribers, which is so surreal. It's a great feeling. It, it just means so much to me that there's 500 people out there who care about my journey and want to help. So thank you, welcome. I hope to release my own music and have a steady YouTube channel. I will always continue to spread awareness of childhood cancer and osteosarcoma and to help, and to help others on their cancer journeys. I hope to finally start college up again. And the most important thing that I want to do right now is be able to give back to my community. I have received so much love and support and I'm sincerely grateful for it. And I hope to give back in any way that I can. So if you're, if you're interested in having me sing for any local events or help with fundraising, I am your girl. I wanted to end this video with a little something that I wrote. To those who are going through a similar situation, my message to you is this. Again, appreciate the little things in life and take things day by day. Yes, you have cancer, but cancer doesn't have you. Hair is just hair. It doesn't define who you are as a person. You define you. Always stay optimistic and don't let percentages and survival rates get to your head. Educate yourself, but don't obsess on the data. The medical industry is always advancing. There are medical miracles every single day and you can be one of them. And I am going to be one of them. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I hope to see you soon. I love you. Recently, I just received a care package from a place called Care Packages for Spoonies, and it is for people with cancer or serious illnesses, and it's completely free. You just have to pay for shipping. And I just wanted to show you what I received, and I'm gonna leave the link down below for their Instagram page so you can sign up too. And there's just some wellness items in here, some really good smelling soap, a face mask, headbands, hold on, cute stickers, they sent me a Kong for my dog because I have a therapy dog. Um, oh, a cute pen, a scrunchie, this really, really cute sticker for your car and it says, please be kind. There's a little handicap on it. A bath bomb. This is essential oils, hand sanitizer, a calendar, and a little, little bracelet that they send you. So it's really, really thoughtful. So I just thought I would share that with you all because I know a lot of my subscribers have serious illnesses such as cancer.